Welcome back. Now, when you look to the left side, you are going to see a tab at the top, and that will be your dashboard. That will take you back to this general section. The next tab down is going to be where you're going to be creating emails. Now, we're going to skip over that tab right now at the moment. We're now going to go to the Audience tab, and we're going to click on it. Now, what MailChimp calls an audience in other Internet service providers is called a list. And this is where your contacts for your various mailing lists will be. You'll see here in the tab on the right side that you have a menu that says Manage Audience. You'll see choices that you can make in order to manage a specific audience. You'll also see here on the left-hand side a number of things that you can do with the audiences that you already have. You can also view a specific audience. So for example, if we use this drop-down menu and we click View Audiences, you'll then see your available audiences. And it's for that reason that the Create an Audience tab is grayed out. So for the sake of this video, we are going to click on this tab and we're going to delete the audiences. We're then going to click Delete. We're then going to click Delete. And we are being told by MailChimp that we cannot delete this particular audience mainly because we have contacts that have come into this audience within the last seven days. So in order to create an audience, we are going to need to upgrade our account. And so we're going to go here to this link. We're going to click Upgrade Now. We are going to choose the Essentials plan and we're going to click Upgrade. And now that we've added the payment method, and we're now going to click on Create Audience. We're going to give the audience a specific name. We're then going to want to write in a default from email address and a default from name. We're then going to set our campaign URL and we're going to use one of our verified domains. Now this is something that your customers are going to see. And so you're going to write in a message to them when they come to a page and they wonder how they were subscribed to this particular mailing list. You're then also going to write in how your recipients can contact you, as well as your website URL, and then you'll click Save. Once you've done that, you will then have a brand new audience to use as your mailing list. Now that we have an audience, we need to work with the settings. And so we're going to go to the Settings tab inside of the audience that we just created. And we're going to want to configure these settings. Now the very first tab is going to be the audience name and defaults. That's going to bring you to this area. Now you're going to have two settings right at the top that are going to be very important. One is going to be to enable double opt-in. This basically means when you enable this that you are going to send the individual a confirmation when they first join your list and if they click that confirmation in their email box they'll then become part of your email marketing list. This is the most conservative way to build an email marketing list because if an individual confirms, it means then that they had to initiate the process to become part of your list. This is your proof that you added people to your list only with their permission. What you can also do is enable the CAPTCHA. What this means then that you won't have a situation where you have an automated system adding people to your email marketing list. MailChimp gives you some other customizations. What you can do is you can set it up so that you can send what's called a final welcome email. This means then that when an individual opts into your audience, you can have an email sent to them with a special welcome email. In order to enable this, you're going to tick this box. You can make it so that individuals can choose whether they're going to receive plain text emails or HTML emails. You can also make it so an individual receives a confirmation if they were to unsubscribe. And if so, you're going to tick off this box. And you also have here new subscriber notifications so you can find out in real time how your list is growing. So you can have an email subscription notification sent to a specific email address in addition to an unsubscribe notification 
or you can receive a daily digest. Once you've determined all of those settings, you can then click Save Audience. Now the next tab in your audience settings are going to be your GDPR fields and settings. And you'll want to make sure that GDPR is something that you are going to need to enable for your marketing and or for your email purposes. Typically, if you're not going to be working with individuals in the EU, you will not have to enable GDPR. But once again, this is going to be something that you're going to want to determine separately from what you're doing with your email marketing. Now, the next tab down is going to be the publicity settings. You can also find them here. And basically, this is a way of giving your readers the opportunity to view your email in their web browser in case they can't read it. Now, MailChimp does have this ticked by default. If you don't want to have this option, you can untick it and then save your publicity settings. Now the next tab down is going to be for your merge tags. And this is a way of being able to take the information that you collect on your sign up form and to place it inside of your email. Now by default, you are going to have an email address, first name and last name merge tag given to you. However, if you collect more information, you can also place that information inside of your email for all of the individuals that are going to be signed up to your email marketing list. The next tab down is going to be your required email footer content. There is a permission reminder, which is the phrase that you wrote in reminding individuals how they became part of your email list, as well as how recipients can contact you. And again, this is going to be required by law for you to have in your email. Inside of your audience settings, you're also going to have an email Beamer address. This will give you the capacity to create an email and then have that email sent to your MailChimp account through your email address, and that email will become a draft email. You can add in your Google Analytics tracking ID. And finally, MailChimp does have webhooks available, which is a more advanced concept from a technical perspective, but it is available to you if you use them in your current configuration. Now these are things that you do want to make sure that you have configured before you start adding contacts and before you start working with your email. Once you've worked with your settings and you have configured them properly, you're then ready to begin adding contacts as well as creating signup forms and the other features inside of your MailChimp account. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video.